and welcome back to the Regimentals YouTube channel. I'm just back from the Military Odyssey show. I've done a, uh, a show report from that show in the past on one of my previous videos, so I didn't feel the need to do any filming at the show. I to, now that I'm back and I've unpacked, I just wanted to touch base with you and show you a few pieces which I bought at the show, um, just to give you an idea of the sort of stuff you can find there. And also, you know, a little teaser for what's coming up on the um, upcoming updates. So it's going to be a short video and I'm just going to run through a, a few bits here. Firstly, on my right here, I have a double decal SS helmet. Um, lovely, lovely decals on, on it. Nice big size. What's interesting about this one, it's um, obviously uh, it may well have been an army helmet in its earlier life or police helmet. And it's been reissued. So it's been uh, refinished. You can see the apple green paint underneath the, 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 the paint finish it has on it. And then it's been issued to the SS um, so it has the, the two lovely decals on it, 100% original decals, um, slight wear on this one. Um, the, wear, the wear on the SS runes, uh, that allows me to see underneath the decal is the refinished paint, which tells me the story of the history of how the, 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 the helmet came to be um, in this format. Lovely liner inside, a name in the back as well. Um, can't remember the make, the, the, it's, it's an ET66 helmet. But a lovely double decal. Um, SS double decals I, I sold some years ago for six, seven thousand um, pounds. Then I recently had one which I featured in one of my videos, which sold for a very, very good price. Um, I think because of the battle damage, it had a lovely bullet hole through it. And and this one here, people, a few people asked me at the show how much I was going to be asking for it, and I think it's going to be about eight and a half thousand pounds which I think is about right now for, for, for an SS double decal. That's the kind of market price they're going for. Along with the helmets here, there's another double decal, but this is an army. Um, you can see a lovely army decal one side, national decal on the other, and this is in the apple green finish, so it's not being reissued or refinished. Um, but what's great about this one is this lovely bit of battle damage on the right here. You can see it had an indentation, and it's, it's, it's made a, a big dent in the, in the skirt there. And, um, the stuff, the thing with the uh, battle damage helmet, some people who are building a mannequin, for example, they just want a standard example. And there's other collectors out there who love battle damage. It shows the pure history um, of what might have happened to, to the helmet. So that's going to be a nice addition to the, to the website. Um, and then the third steel helmet I wanted to show is another SS helmet, but this is an M40. So it has the, the molded rivets, uh, not the, um, the two piece air vents uh, like the M35 would have. Nice clean inside, and you can see the, the SS decal there. Yes, it's lost a lot of the decal, um, but you you know, there's still, I would say, 65% of the decal there, enough for you to see it's a nice um, original SS helmet. Um, I found it hard to get single decal SS helmets recently. Um, not sure why, um, I just guess it's like any kind of this military, it's just becoming harder and harder to find. Moving on to these pickle hobs, two lovely pickle hobs, the Brunswick here and the rare Barden 109, um, both enlisted mans, but lovely, sleepy, untouched pickle hobs, desirable uh, regiments and states. So they'll be coming onto the website probably on our next update. have what appears to be a miniature um, Knight's Cross Citation, but of course, um, long-term collectors will know this is the promotion document. And what this is, is it looks exactly like the, the Knight's Cross folder, the, the, the folder that the Knight's Cross Citation would come in, much smaller format, the same gold eagle on the front. These were produced by the same company that made the, the Knight's Cross Citations. And then inside it has the, um, the documentation of promotion. And this one here is for a Luftwaffe General. Um, and you see inside the, the signatures of uh, Hit, um, Adolf Hitler and Hermann Göring as well. The um, uh, uh, general's name was Max Moore, um, uh, General of the Luftwaffe. Lovely thing, lovely gold print writing as well. Very, very you know, fancy and stunning piece. But of course, um, a lot less in price than the Knight's Cross Citation would be. Uh, before I go on to these two bits, I just wanted to mention this piece over here. This got a lot of attention at the show, Polish General's Cap. Anything Polish um, is always popular, you know. Obviously, there's a lot of Polish collectors out there, uh, Anglo-Polish as well. People uh, from Polish ancestry who are after stuff from their own, from their own ancestry. And lovely to see the maroon, the maroon cloth underneath the, the, the band here with the three stars on the front. 
a lovely little piece that I really like the Polish items. So the next piece I wanted to mention was this um, Luftwaffe honor goblet. Um, lovely alpaca example. Um, the Luftwaffe goblets were, you know, regularly seen throughout the 80s and 90s, but another piece, another example of what's completely dried up. You just don't see them anymore. And, and this example awarded to um, a, uh, a guy from JUH, I think he was a pilot um, or, or observer. I think he was an observer in the JU-88s. Uh, his name is Hasso von der Vess. Um, obviously, the, the goblet dated... Um, in 43 this guy won the german cross in gold he won his obviously his first and second class iron crosses as well honor goblets are just so stunning to look at and the lovely patina that remains on them obviously the marking on the bottom as well lovely piece of history the nice thing about the honor goblets is that you can have them around around the house as a, a, an interesting talking point they're not you know what i would call in your face uh, german swastikas everywhere um, they're just a nice ornate item we have a very special item. This is the last piece that I wanted to feature. Um, this is a S Algemein SS officer's cap. Um, but what's great about this one is it has its full history of, of how it came back from the war. Inside, there's a label inside, um, Gordon Yates, 101st Airborne, um, lovely original label. The eagle, and swast the eagle and skull on the front has been cleaned, so it's lost its nice frosting, but it, nonetheless, it's an original set of insignia. Um, it's just so fantastic to find items with history, and I know I talk about this a lot. 95% of the items come through our hands. It's just merchandise, which has been um, gone from collection to collection or, or through dealers' hands. Um, very rarely do we have items with history, and, and you see um, around the world people selling items with stories, and 95% of it is, is BS, to be, to be quite frank. Um, this is a lovely piece. The, the name label inside, you can see its originality. It's a known piece. The 101st Airborne veteran that brought it back was a known person um, around the 1980s. He used to attend a lot of the reunions. Um, so I have full history of this guy. Um, he picked it up at the end of the war in Austria. Um, and that leads me on to what I wanted to talk about as, 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 as well, so is the demographic of collectors um, who are out there. Um, at the show at the weekend, I noticed a real vast age of collectors. People tend to think that military collectors are men between the age of 30 and, and 60. Um, obviously older as well, and those guys in their 70s and 80s, they're the guys who are releasing stuff from their collections and, and now selling it. But at the show, there were so many young collectors. I chatted for a long time to a guy called a young young guy called Toby, um, very you know, young teenager, um, and he was so he was so enthusiastic. He was it was great to talk to. Asked me lots of questions. You could see that he was trying to cram in as much information as he could in the short time he had to talk to us. And I managed to introduce him to one of the famous authors who who have written books with us as well, and. Um, so many other young guys, but also women as well. Many women at the show asking questions. And, and, and this cap here, um, the Algemeine cap, I've actually sold it. Um, I wanted to feature it in a video just, just to show you the kind of stuff that we get and because it has important history. But I've sold this to um, a female collector. One of my biggest collectors in the UK is, is actually a lady. And she's not buying it for anybody else. It's for herself. Um, she recognises um, how, how good the investment is in military, but also... Also, she's very keen on the history, um, very enthusiastic. So it's just getting across to the viewers of the videos that, you know, don't just assume that every guy that collects militaria is, is, a, is, a, is a man. Don't, don't assume um, they're, they're of a certain age group. There's a wide demographic of collectors, which is good for the future of, of your collections. So, yeah, that's basically all I wanted to feature in this video. Just um, a few of the better pieces that I picked up at the show. We are going to be slow with updates. There won't be an update this week. I, will, I may do a small one um, next Friday. Um, it is the end of the summer now. People are away on holidays and we'll probably crack on in September with lots of, of busy updates towards the end of the month. Our next show will be the Birmingham show the, at um, the Motorcycle Museum. I think it's the 19th of September. Um, I, I know the organiser of the show very well um, and she's very keen to, to get it out there that the show is going ahead so we get a lot through the door. So I think that's the 19th of September at the Motorcycle Museum in Birmingham. We'll be there, we'll have a big stand with lots of items and it's probably the best um, 
focused militaria show in the UK, I'd say, for all round World War One and World War Two and antique weapons as well. So try and get along to that show. Keep watching the website, keep watching the, um, the Facebook and the Instagram, and we'll see you very soon.